Hey, everybody. This is Rockin' Robin, former WWF Women's World Champion, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. Welcome to In Your Head Wrestling Radio. I am the internet icon, the pride of the pilgrims, handsome Jackie Jones, along with my right-hand man, the enforcer of the Hittyverse. One inch biceps, the power go <laughs> Yeah, bah, how about that? It's pretty powerful, it's very impressive. Yeah. And joining us right now, and she might be wondering why, <laughs> we have Francesca <laughs> Zapatelli on the line. Hey there, and I am not a WWE icon, for the record. All right, all right. It was in the press uh, press release. I did not write the uh, the, the, the review, but it was, a, it was in the press release they sent. So. I saw that. I'm like, no, that's wrong. Let's not misconstrue <laughs> things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, well I'm, I'm sorry I was taking a drink of my Gatorade. Uh, well, everyone know, uh, Ballerina, I'm Not, is your documentary you wrote, directed, you star in. And uh, it's on video on demand October 6th. It's out now, I believe. Uh, give it people a night. Think... Go on, I'm sorry. I keep interjecting you. I apologize. Amazon pushed it back. So it's going to be out next week. And I'm doing a week of press. And I'm so happy to be on your show. Excellent. Well, we're happy to have you here. Thank you. Excellent. So we'll give people an idea of what the, the documentary is about. The documentary is about my story in the wrestling world as well as the world of female wrestling and the history of it from back in the day, women weren't allowed to wrestle alongside men. And then the fabulous Moolah and Vince McMahon senior actually changed the law so women can fight with the guys to now where women are the main event in the UFC. So it's really um, a passionate story and peace of mind that I've been working on for a few years and it's fun and enticing yet informative. And I feel that it gives a, real look into the world of wrestling from a female perspective. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, you mentioned the um, UFC main events now with women. And just last year on Raw, uh, we had a lot of women in the main event with um, um, uh, Charlotte and, uh, and Sasha. So it was like really perfect timing. But uh, when did you mm-hmm. start to make, when did you start to make the documentary? Um, about 2011. But the idea first was, planted in my mind after I watched the fiction film, The Wrestler with Mickey Work. And I thought it was such an honest look at indie wrestling and indie wrestling gone bad. And I had such an interesting experience, not only with my own journey in wrestling, but also this, these amazing women that I met throughout my journey that I wanted to share my story, their story, and have an honest look at indie wrestling and how it can turn out good and not as tragically as a fiction story or as a lot of superstars that we have lost way too soon. Like one of my favorite um, childhood wrestlers, uh, Sherry Martell. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned like having a, you think you turn out good. And I think it's interesting that uh, you don't end up in the WWE. And I think some people would think that, uh, you know, to wrestling to actually make it, you have to be in the WWE, but uh, you consider, you know, being on the Indies, being wrestling all these different countries uh, as making it, you know what I mean? Well, exactly. And originally, me and a few of the other girls, that was the dream. And that is the mecca and epitome of wrestling in the wrestling world. However, just because you don't make it doesn't mean you can't find purpose, um, success, and a different platform. Mm-hmm. The, how, long did it, how long did it take you to finish the documentary? It took me much longer than I had planned. Because uh, <laughs> I originally started with one idea, and then you go and you gather footage. And then I'm like, well, I have no story life here. So then I went and got more footage. And then it took me a while to piece together a through line that was connected and a storyline that showed the history and um, really celebrated the world of wrestling despite its challenges. Yeah. Now, I know at the beginning of the documentary, I don't know if some of you were talking about, but you mentioned um, not wanting to uh, follow like your parents' religion and uh, so you kind of like leave home. What, what was a religion? They were Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's the irony. I was allowed to do ballet, nonviolent, uh, gender specific, and I wasn't even allowed to watch wrestling. So whenever I go to my grandma's house, uh, she wasn't a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, she was a good Catholic. She loved wrestling. So we would watch wrestling together, and it was really special. Um, but I could never say word to it to my parents because I'd get grounded in, in immense trouble. Yeah. 
have you since uh since then um do you have a relationship with your parents i do not i got kicked out of the jehovah's witness faith and um that definitely put me on first a rebellious path 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 Mm -hmm. i should say and then i just was at a crossroads and I made a decision. What do you want to do with your life? And I realized it's time to actually try to follow my dream of become a wrestler. And my grandma was really encouraging of it. And she's actually at my house right now. Oh, and I have cool. a great relationship with her. And if I didn't follow my dream of becoming a wrestler, I wouldn't be at where I'm at today, which is really a great place. Mm-hmm. So I, I assume she's seen the, uh, the documentary then. Yes, she, she likes it very much. Very cool. And uh, oddly enough, I, well, I started watching wrestling with my grandparents. Oh, no way. Yeah. Uh, they're a huge. Uh, what was her, who was her favorite? You know what? This is awful. I'm not, I don't even remember. At the time, it was Hulk Hogan. <laughs> they're right. Well, that's what I meant. We started in the watching. 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, was, yeah so I'm not grand- sure exactly who was her favorite. <laughs> Uh yeah, because uh, that's who my grandparents love. They love the the good guys, the uh, uh, Dusty Rhodes in the NWA, and definitely Hulk Hogan in the WWE, and Hillbilly Jim. But I'm not sure why. But they loved Hillbilly Jim for some reason. <laughs> 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 well, my my grandma had a Hulk Hogan toy, so I can't yeah. say officially that was her favorite, but uh, it's a good guess. Yeah. Who were the people that like uh, made you a wrestling fan? Um, I think. Right before I got into it, and when I was watching like Trish Stratus, um, Lita, they were such living, breathing superheroes. They were beautiful, they were athletic, they wore superhero costumes. And I'm like, that's what I want to do with my life. Why not do it? Mm-hmm. So, which part of that uh, was really drew you, or was it the combination of all those things? It was everything. Um, <laughs> Not only the acting element, um, mm-hmm. the athletic element, the high flying circus element, the live performance element. To me, it's the epitome of showmanship mm-hmm. in acting, for that matter, and athleticism, yeah. for that matter. You have <laughs> other sports where they're just like playing hockey or playing football, which is still a feat in itself. Mm-hmm. However, in professional wrestling, you are doing amazing feats of athleticism as well as acting in front of huge crowds and interacting with your opponent or contender all in one. It doesn't get more uh, complicated or more beautiful than that in my mind. Mm -hmm. So I know in the documentary you're talking about finding, you know, a, uh, the university of wrestling. So, and I believe you were the only girl in, in the, in the class. So, what was it like, uh, you know, training with the guys? Were, were they rough on you, or did they try to take it easy on you? At that time, my coaches uh, were the Ballard Brothers and the hardcore kid, Aaron Aguilera, and Tom Howard. And they were great. They were so supportive. I found the challenge was more of the other wrestlers in the school and the locker room banter and being the mm-hmm. only girl. However, when I switched over to the Inoki jo- Dojo in New Japan, I was one of the guys. It was great. I, there was no difference. They treated me like one of the guys. They, they were, I got trained hard, which is why it was there. But there was definitely no misogyny or it was a very welcoming environment. Yeah. yeah. Aaron Aguilera is actually a, a guest here on the show. He's the first guest I ever interviewed before we started the show. I uh, won a contest and, and, uh, and was a co-host for a show and he was the guest. Which is odd. Yeah, I always really liked him. But what what was the difference between uh, wrestling in the you know training in the states and the Inoki Dojo? Because I've seen there's a documentary about you know dojos in in Japan. They're pretty brutal. What I love about New Japan and the Inoki Dojo is it's not just professional wrestling training. You have your shoot training. You have your weight training to really encompass all parts of fighting. And I feel if the better shape you're in. Uh, the better you can do shoot fighting, whether it be Muay Thai or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you can incorporate that into the ring to just finesse your wrestling skills. Mm -hmm. And they totally beat us with a pole, too. (laughs) That's what I was about to ask. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot about that part. Like, oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't know if I'd forget about that part, but... (laughs) I I blanked it out of my memory. (laughs) So uh, you said that, you know, when you were training in the States of some of the other, the rest of the, the trainees, like what kind of, how did they treat you? Like, well, did they, were they ribbing you? You know, what kind of stuff uh, were they doing? At UPW or in New Japan? Uh, before you went to Japan in the States. 
UPW, um, I got to quit saying, um, I keep saying, um, <laughs> Sorry. I work on that. I need to work on that. Too. I, uh, I guess to be frank, cause I am one guy I was having, we were going through our, our, our training match and he, I think he ran into my elbow too hard and everyone laughed at him. Uh-huh. So at the end of class, he spit on my car, like a big, you know, loogie like on my windshield. Right. Yeah. And it was totally gross. And then I complained <laughs> about it and I was like, just told to know my place. Mm-hmm. But after that incident, he kept being aggressive and harassing me and no one told him not to do it. Mm-hmm. Perhaps I was being too sensitive, but it wasn't right. Mm-hmm. So, However, it could it could have been a girl doing that. It's not necessarily a sexism thing. Mm-hmm. There's different personalities that just don't get along. Yeah, because uh, in the documentary, you kind of have a, uh, uh, a not a rivalry, but uh, you're trying to get the uh, the respect of uh, of Christy Ricci. So once you got into wrestling, um, how did other people treat you? Well, my quest for respect with Christy Ricci, who was a well respected. Uh, professional wrestler in the indie circuit because after I chose not to pursue professional wrestling with WWE or New Japan and just take a more independent route, I got into internet wrestling and that's not respected by the pros. And I had a chip on my shoulder that I wanted to be respected no matter what my choice is. Sure. I think that would be, you know, whatever it would feel like. So you said they didn't respect you for for that, but, um, did they do anything specific or is it just kind of an attitude that you could tell they don't respect, uh, you know, that type of wrestling? Just an attitude. And then one time I was working with Lucha Vavoom and I love Lucha Vavoom. And uh, I was I had the match and I had the Mohawk when I first started wrestling. Mm-hmm. And then they wanted me to have hair for the match. You know, so I put on fake hair and I told the wrestler I was working with, do not pull my hair. This is fake hair. It will come out. First thing she does is pull off my wig. <laughs> I thought I went with it because it's funny. However, uh, it was just like, you know, a dig, a poke. Oh, sure. you don't want me to do that? That's the first thing I'm going to do. Take that. Uh-huh. <laughs> so uh, another time? Go mm-hmm. ahead. No, go on. I, I was at Wrestling Miami for uh, AAA, and the luchadoras before us, um, you know, were, were going through their match, and I was going through mine with that wrestler named Raquel. And, you know, we got our choreography down and, you know, had it all set up. They were watching on the green screen. The Lucha Daughters did the exact same match we were going to do. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, you know, they didn't Seated. have to do that. And if uh, we hadn't seen it on the green screen, we would have looked totally amateur. Or, I don't know, like a knockoff copying them. We were able yeah. to switch up our match. However, mm-hmm. it was just another thing. However, in life, there's always going to be people that like to dig you and poke you. And you rise above it and laugh about it later. Mm-hmm. Well, what's a green screen? Like, uh, you would wrestle in front of the green screen and then put something in the background. Oh no, that it was on TV. So we were like in oh, a locker room watching the event on oh, TV. I see. I see. I see. I was wondering. I thought I, I never heard of green screen wrestling, but I got you. No, yeah. No, I, I know I you stay on the monitor. I got you. I got you. No, you were probably right. I still know what I'm talking about. So you mentioned uh, China in the documentary. Did you ever get to meet her in person? I did meet her in New Japan. And she was one of my heroes growing up, too. Mm-hmm. The only woman to win an intergender championship. So strong. And her story is so tragic. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, did you try to contact her at all when you were making the documentary? You know, to be more Actually, part of it? Actually. Like an interview or anything? Yeah. Ken Yasuda, who's in the documentary, he's very good friend with China and he speaks of her in the documentary mm-hmm. and I was doing some more principal photography at the end just to tie it up uh, to lock everything um, th- this summer that she passed. Mm-hmm. That's too, that's too bad. It, do you, yeah. do you have a background in, uh, in film at all, or was this something you learned to do the documentary? I do not have a background in film. I've started pursuing film and studying filmmaking. It became my new passion just the art of telling stories and how people can live vicariously through them and learn a lesson or go on a journey just by watching a movie. Mm-hmm. So uh, what kind of stuff would you like to do now? Is it more documentary work or 
uh, like more of a, a, a regular film? I've done a few features and I, I really know. appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I was a EP on Life of Crime in 2013 with uh, Jennifer Aniston and most staff and Tim Robbins. I have an indie film called Spreading Darkness that will go on DOD next year uh, with Eric Roberts and um, Dominique Swain and a few other popular indie actors. I, I do enjoy features because of the simplicity of having a scripted narrative and you know what you're going to shoot that day and then you know how to shoot it and then you know what to edit. In documentary, it's much more free form, mm-hmm. which adds the challenge. It, however, I do love that challenge of going on the exploration of finding the footage and putting it together that I, I definitely want to keep doing documentaries as well as features. I just want to keep creating and making films. Yeah. What kind of genre uh, are your feature films? It's not like the one would be a horror movie. Spreading Darkness is a psychological thriller. Mm-hmm. A life of crime was a thriller as well. Uh, horror psychological thrillers are great for the filmmaking business because they translate worldwide. You can make a comedy and it's funny in America, but it's not funny internationally. Mm-hmm. But I do like those films just for the business sense of it. Mm-hmm. However, I'm open to doing a comedy or you know expanding my horizons to something new. Mm-hmm. And what's uh, I saw this on your Facebook, Sin S Y N. Yeah, that's a, a TV pilot that's on Amazon Prime, and it's a psychological thriller. Uh, when does that start? It's it's up. You can watch it on Amazon oh, it's Prime. Up now. All right. Yeah, and it's thin, um, S-Y-N. Mm-hmm. Uh, are, are you in that, or are you part of, part of like, uh, making it? Yeah, hey, I produced it. Oh, very cool. So, um, the documentary, uh, did you, did you screen the documentary anywhere? Like, in front of an I'm audience or anything? Private. Not yet. I've just done a private screening. Mm-hmm. Uh, how and did that go? Pretty honest. There were people that really loved it, and then there were non-wrestling fans that thought it was really interesting. And then there were people that were like, meh. You know, and I got to appreciate that people all have their own opinion, and it's all wonderful. And when people watch it, I want them to walk away with their, their own opinion and take from it. However, at the end of the day, I hope people are entertained and learn something. Yeah. So uh, did you say there, were, there would be other screenings of it? I'm open to it. Nothing's official. There could be a potential of a limited theatrical release. However, to be honest <laughs> with you, Jack, I've been working on this project for so long. I just sure. wanted to get it out there. <laughs> yeah. It's been my passion project for five, six years. That mm-hmm. I'm just ready to get it out there and move on to the next one. Yeah. So what was, uh, what was the most difficult part about putting the documentary together? Uh, maybe that you didn't expect. Clearances. Yeah, I originally approached the WWE to work out a deal with them. And we went back and forth for, for about a year. It never came to a deal. Uh, so that took longer than I thought it would. Yeah. However, I continued on and got all the footage I needed and clearances mm-hmm. that, was needed that to be had. To. Was, that mm-hmm. to use, was that to use footage, like, uh, you know, match footage or to do interviews? What was it for to work with WWE? Mm-hmm. For that purpose, to use footage, uh, to u- utilize their talent for interviews, but also I pitched the opportunity to collaborate with them. Sure. The WWE Films is huge, and I have huge respect for the organization and what they created. And as you mentioned earlier, like when I first started wrestling, there was like platforms for female wrestlers, but mm-hmm. they have really stepped it up, not only like with Total Divas reality show, but NXT. The women are being promoted more in the show than they were 10 years ago. And I'm really excited to see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any uh, current favorites or people that you would, uh, you would like to wrestle? I'm a big fan of the legacy wrestlers like Natalia and Charlotte Flair, mm-hmm. especially being from Canada, like in the hearts so are like icons. I'm a huge fan of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really like, AJ, AJ Lee. I know she's not wrestling anymore, but I love how she doesn't play by the politics. Mm-hmm. And she speaks her mind. I really respect that. Mm-hmm. Have you read her book? I haven't. Yeah, I haven't either. I heard it's good, though. Okay. Well, we'll read it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm also so, very curious if Ronda Rousey actually goes to the WWE. 
Yeah, yeah. There, there was talks about doing the the four horse women versus the you know like the four uh, horse you know the four horse women of the WWE versus the four horse women of the, of MMA. If uh, if that actually happens, I'd love happens. to see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you follow MMA do too? You are you an MMA yes. fan? Well, I'm a fight fan. At the end of the day, whether it be MMA or boxing, pro wrestling, it's an art, it's a sport that I'm definitely passionate about. Mm-hmm. So, uh, how how did you become friends with Shirley Martinez? We met in the indie independent scene, and then we just became friends. And she is such a sweetheart with a big heart that I have much love for her. She's like a sister. Mm-hmm. Um, would you uh, would you ever want to work with her on some of your movies? Well, you know, besides she's the documentary, in this movie. of course. Of, yeah, well, obviously. Yeah. yeah, you know what? <laughs> she's such a great screen queen that she definitely needs to have a horror vehicle for her. So that's, yeah. that's a great idea, Jack. Mm-hmm. If you talk about mm-hmm. making yeah. tonight, that makes sense to me. I'm a big horror movie fan, so I can definitely see that. The uh, how about the TNA footage? Uh, what was the what was the working relationship with TNA like? Um, I said, oh my god, ah! <laughs> TNA was it was a very pleasant working relationship. I'll just keep All it right. at that. All right, for, it sounds it when, when you're. <laughs> when you're when you when you first yeah, when I bring up TNA and you scream, it does sound like a very good uh, relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was your favorite country to compete in? Because it seems like you, uh, you compete in many different countries. I didn't compete in that many countries. Christy Ricci and Shelly Martinez are the superstars in the indie circuit that competed in a lot of countries. Mm, all right. So which which countries did you were in Japan? Uh, you know, I guess Hawaii isn't another country, but <laughs> well, well then if I have to pick Hawaii, I, I will totally pick Hawaii. Although we were wrestling in mud for a mud wrestling um, pilot that didn't get picked up. However, uh-huh. we were at the Wahoo State Fair for two weeks doing a wrestling show in front of the Wahoo Fair audience, mm-hmm. and it was great fun because we were in Hawaii. However, there was bugs and sticks <laughs> and whatnot in the mud. They didn't. Oh really. The, Theatric, yeah, because yeah, there's theatrical mud that is like really nice and smooth yeah. that you're supposed to use. They just yeah. went to Home Depot and picked up topsoil. <laughs> that seems terrible. <laughs> it, it was, but like I said, we were in Hawaii, so it kind of bounced out. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a the glamorous lifestyle of a mud wrestler, mud fighter. Here's bugs <laughs> and sticks. And... <laughs> Not so much. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what was uh, what was uh, the rest of Hawaii like besides uh, the mud? I love Hawaii. I really do. I love the beach. I love surfing. Uh, I love hiking. Mm-hmm. Big fan. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, do you still wrestle at all, or uh, have you uh, retired from from uh, competing in, in fighting? I have officially retired. As I was talking with Lucha Bavoom, they want to bring me back. I'm definitely open to it. I love wrestling. I love the camaraderie with the girls. I love performing. However, other work opportunities have uh, taken over, and, and I really love the new opportunities that I'm pursuing as well. Mm-hmm. How uh, how would you compare the uh, the lucha uh, wrestling for lucha style as compared to wrestling uh, traditional wrestling? Lucha style is tricky because it's backwards, and there's so many acrobats. I think it's more challenging personally, just because my training was an American style. Mm-hmm. So, um. What what were you hoping to accomplish when you went into uh, making the, the, the documentary? And did that change at all over time? I think with anything, it it evolves. I, maybe my original purpose wasn't what it ended with. I wanted to show an honest look of wrestling. Girls may watch like Total Divas and think wrestling is so easy and glamorous. When in reality, it, it's a road of hard knocks and not you know, daffodils and daisies that I wanted mm-hmm. people, especially women, if they go into it to know they have some obstacles to overcome. However, I also wanted to celebrate how far women have come in wrestling. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, it's kind of like the Rocky story with boobs and it's relatable <laughs> to someone who's not even a wrestler. If you have sure. a dream, pursue your dream. You may not make mm-hmm. that dream, but in the process, you're on a journey, you learn something, and you find another destination that you were actually meant to be at. Yeah. Yeah. And how's the knee doing? Oh, it's good. Good. 
Well, we're good to hear that. Yeah. yeah. It, it looked pretty good. She can pull a car like that. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you wanted five steps. You're welcome. I, I want you to teach me how to pull a car. If, before I die, I got to learn how to pull a car like that. Everyone needs to know how to pull a car. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to step it out. Next time, we need to pull like a bigger car. Like okay. Maybe a Chrysler or something bigger. Got to keep uh, challenging ourselves. There you go. <laughs> I, I just want to sit in the car. You guys can pull me around. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, that's, my that's actually needed. If you can steer the car, can we, you're pulling the car and no one's steering it, it's kind of dangerous. It may go to the right or the left, so that would be really appreciated if you could do all that. Right, all right. <laughs> I'll get you an intro out there and pull me around. I like, I like this idea. <laughs> oh, no. Going down a whole different deal. road now. <laughs> <laughs> I cracked the whip if you're not if you're oh, no. slow. Well, I'm going to say I give you a whip. We're going too far now. Just be well, maybe, yeah. No, yeah, maybe just for one of his prices. You right. can crack the whip on him. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe let oh, me great. crack the whip on him. Oh, He's no. going too slow. Come on, talk her. I, I, I might not mind from her, but I mean. <laughs> so uh, where can people find Ballerina Not, um, you know, to follow it online? Ballerina, I'm not.com. All updates are up there. The trailer's up there, and it'll be on Amazon.com next week. And for people like not in America, they have to make sure they go on .com because it's just being released in America at this point. Oh, okay. And uh, how can they follow you? Not at your house, uh, or anything, I, but you know. <laughs> please, please don't follow me in the car. <laughs> That's just for you too. All right, all right. <laughs> they can. They can follow me on Instagram at Francesca Zapatelli, or my Twitter is Francesca Zapit because I, I can put my whole name, or yeah. Facebook where I'm Francesca Zapatelli, mm-hmm. and also my website FrancescaZapatelli.com. Yeah, and do you prefer Francesca or uh, or Frankie? That's a good question. I I like either or. Oh. Um, if you're my friend, you can call me Frankie. So we're friends, you can call me Frankie. All right. Now, I, guess I thought you were going to say, if you're friends, you can call me Frankie, so you can call me Fran- Francesca. But... <laughs> no, we're friends now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very cool. Well, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to have you here. Well, thank you for having me, and thank you for checking out the film. And I encourage everyone listening, please check it out. And thank you. Very cool. And I look forward to, uh, to your future uh, projects. I appreciate that. And I look forward to making them. Very cool. All right. We will retire. <laughs> okay. Ciao. Uh, bye. Hey, Monkey, it's me, DDP, Diamond Dallas Page. And you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. Don't even think about getting off or you will feel.